Okay, fellow Moto users, what is this wonderful thing sitting in front of you, you may be asking? This is the Boba Fett thermostat. That's right, I made a Boba Fett thermostat. Why did I make a Boba Fett thermostat? Because Google paid Nest $3.2 billion for their stupid hockey puck thermostat, so maybe I can uh, become a billionaire with my sweet, sweet, boom, Boba Fett thermostat. And in the meantime, I could show you some cool Noto shading tricks in Moto. Um, so I made this sweet, sweet Boba Fett thermostat in uh, Mesh Fusion in like three minutes because any idiot could make something cool in Mesh Fusion in like three minutes. Um, so the market will probably be overrun with thermostats. But back to the tutorial. Uh, we're going to do something um, with nodal shading that's difficult to do. Maybe not impossible, but very difficult to do with ju just the shader tree. And that is we want a gradient to go around our thermostat curve here from cool to warm. So if I were to, uh, let me just select my, click here and select my uh, temp readout material. If I were to add a gradient in here, and let's uh, edit our gradient real quick. Anybody else here wish there was a bigger button for that? I do. Um, actually, you can edit your gradient down here just as easily, I suppose. So let's edit the gradient down here. Okay, cool to warm, right? Problem is, how do I get it to follow this curve? So I have some texture inputs over here. Um, it defaults to incidence angle. That's not going to do anything for me. And there's a lot of others, but honestly, nothing is going to give me what I want in terms of an input parameter. I need an input that goes around the curve. I need to map each of these values around the end of the curve, right? Around this, this curve here. So how do I get an input parameter for this curve, for this almost a circle? <laughs> almost a circle? What's that? An arc. That's an arc which is almost a circle. Okay, so we're going to go and accomplish this with nodal shading. So let me kill this guy. Um, one of the things you can do with nodal shading, of course, is you can drag your entire material into the schematic and start wiring up these channels here, all these material channels you see um, with various textures and gradients and things like that. Personally, I don't think that's the best way to do it. Um, I'm going to remove the node here. Uh, I think you're better off adding, utilizing the shader tree for what it's good at. So if I add a constant uh, node here, what the shader tree is good at is rearranging things really quickly, blending things really quickly, and turning things on and off really quickly. Those are all things nodes uh, can do but aren't particularly good and fast at. So these are wins for the shader tree. So I'm going to utilize my shader tree strengths to um, deal with this texturing here. So. Diffuse color, that's the uh, channel I want. Also, like doing things like this, changing a uh, channel for this constant to be on is very fast in the shader tree, right? Uh, it's faster than rewiring it in a nodal setup. Um, so I drag my constant in here. I'm going to pull back. And let's take a look at my 3D view. Um, in this piece of geometry, I have da -da, a curve that I drew on my geometry here. Uh, using the, snap, the curve tool and, and Moto's new snapping tools. It took like two seconds, just drew a curve on there, right? You can see the curve over here and uh, influence stats, polygons by type curve. You see there's one curve stuck in there. And I'm going to use this curve to give me coordinates for mapping my gradient around my uh, arc there, otherwise known as an almost circle. Um, okay, so here's my constant and I need to feed this uh, some color values. So let's grab a couple more nodes. Let's grab a, under shader nodes, processing gradients, we're gonna grab a gradient. And we are also going to grab under probe, a curve probe. And with our curve probe, we need the actual curve fed into that. So temp readout, that's my uh, geometry here with the curve in it. So you can have polygons in there, you can even have multiple curves in there. And we just drag it in here. Um, the curve probe has a curve ID, so if I have multiple curves in, in this uh, mesh item here, right here, temporary data, it just has one curve in it, but if I had like five curves, my curve probe can cycle through them with the uh, curve ID uh, parameter or, or channel. So let's hook up my curve. Now my curve probe sees a curve, and I need to pump my curve probe into my gradient, okay? So this uh, channel right here, 
percentage is what I want. It follows the percentage from zero to 100% around the curve, which is mapped perfectly to my um, arc here. And I'm going to pump that into the initial value of the gradient. The initial value is what's going to give me the axis down here, right? That's going to be my curve from zero to 100. Now, I need one more thing though. My curve needs an input position. It needs something to compare the curve to. So my gradient has a texture locator here, and my texture locator has coordinates. My gradient has texture coordinates. We need to see where the curve is on the gradient's texture coordinates. And you can see the input position has these three little dots here, or three little lines of three little dots. That's a matrix, it's looking for a matrix input. Whereas the output here, you see these three little uh, dots here. If I output my texture coordinates and, and try to input that into my um, input position, it's not going to work because this is um, a vector, right? It's a list of, of numbers. While this is, the matrix is a list of lists. So um, this list of numbers is not going to work with a list of lists. We need to make this list of numbers a list of lists. So how do we make that? We can go to our uh, channel uh, modifiers here and look under matrix and matrix construct. That will let us build a matrix. So here we're going to input our three little dots here, right? There's a clue that that might work. So let's input a list of numbers and it's going to output a list of lists of numbers. That makes sense, a list of lists. That's what a matrix is. So put that in here, now we've got our input position. That's something that our curve can compare itself to. It can compare its the, the percentage length along the curve to the gradient texture coordinates, okay? So that is gonna let us take our percentage now is going to be usable and we can pipe this into the init value. And then on our gradient, let's go to our gradient here. And we don't wanna do these texture color um, texture color RGBs at the bottom. The texture colors, the texture value, or the computed values, see how this has a yellow gear here? Let me just try and hover there. Yellow gear is modified, this channel is changed by a modifier. Basically what these are doing is they're computing these values, right? Um, the texture value is computing the value, and these texture colors are computing the values of, of these guys. So we wanna adjust these guys. So let's just, uh, I you can middle click, that's the easiest way to do it, make sure 100%. Let's go to a deep red, and we'll go to a deep blue, right? Red to blue. You can see over here in our gradient. And coming back over to the schematic, now we want to take those computed values, this output right here. And again, we're not going into our texture color of our gradient, we're going into the color value of our gradient because this is the computed values. And you'll see, voila, we've got a gradient perfectly aligned to our arc because it is probing the curve, and at 0% we have blue, and 100% we have uh, red, and it's comparing the the, mate, the the coordinates for the gradient with the curve percentage all along here, because we're, we've got that plugged in to our initial position using our little matrix construct node. And it's really that easy, so that's pretty cool, but I think we can do a couple more things with this, and, and we can do that using the shader tree. So, one of the things we did, of course, is we plugged into our constant value here. And if I right click on my constant value and duplicate it, and I've got another one here that's all plugged in, and I can right click and change this to luminous amount, okay? Um, on our material node, our luminous, I'm sorry, not luminous amount, luminous color, see? Whoops, luminous color, right there, luminous color. So again, changing things um, over here and turning things off and on, uh, or even layering and changing opacity is very easy. So we can have multiple versions of luminous color, or we can uh, uh, mix up different diffuse colors in here and, and without having to go in and adjust our nodal uh, shading graph, which can be kind of tedious. So this is why I'm using constants in, in the uh, shader tree to hold values that I'm computing over here in the, sh in the nodal graph. Um, okay, so we've got luminous color on here, but we don't have a luminous amount. So if I go over here to my material and turn my luminous amount to one, you know, it just sort of brightens it up. And that's not really what I want. I want sort of a cooler effect in there, right? So let's turn this back to zero. Um, but I'm gonna add another constant in here. We'll just uh, add layer constant. And we're gonna change this one to luminous amount. 
there we go and pipe this guy back down here and we're going to mess with our curves again so um, I've got one curve probe with this gradient as initial position but I want to use another gradient for uh, the luminous amount value so if I add in another gradient, so just uh, shader nodes, recent, gradient, there we go. And if I double click the little yellow there, there's my gradient coordinates. I need to create another curve probe node because I'm getting, I need these coordinates piped in. I already have these over here. I don't want to use this gradient's coordinates. I want new gradient coordinates. So I can just control D um, double to duplicate this guy. And I don't want that hooked in. What I want is this guy hooked in, right? Okay. Zoom in here, my texture coordinates output, the input of this matrix node. Um, I do want the same curve. I want a new curve probe, so we can we can duplicate this or we can go over here and add probe, curve probe, and I've got my new curve probe. I do want the same curve, so I'll stick that right there. And for input position, I want to use this gradients matrix. Now I've got input position. And over here, since we're, we're talking about luminous amount, that's a value, not a color. So we're going to pipe the uh, texture value over into the value of our constant node. Okay. All right. So let's continue. And let me just rearrange the uh, graph here a little bit. It's a little messy. Um, okay. So let's just review. We've got a curve. And going into the curve probe. We have an input position, which is created from a matrix that we used our gradient texture coordinates. We used our gradient texture coordinates rather to create a matrix to go into our input position. So now our curve probe can compare positions on the curve with positions on the, uh, the gradient uh, texture coordinates. And for our initial value of our gradient, we will take a look at, let's use percentage again so you can see how this works. So there's percentage, and if we adjust our gradient over here in the gradient editor, and we adjust the, uh, now we're dealing with the value component, right? Not the colors, and not the value down here. That's the computed value, the value up here. So let's turn this down. So as we approach 100, the value goes to zero. Now you notice I had to zoom in a little bit to refresh my, um, screen here and that's just an unfortunate uh, bug right now with Moto 801 SP0 so maybe SP1 we can get this fixed up um, let's put that back up to 100 and scooch this over to sort of tighten that up and do a little camera zoom to update that so you can see where the uh, luminance value checks out right about here that's kind of a cool little effect um, but let's see what else we can do with this. Let me go back over here to the schematic. And instead of using percentage, let's use distance as our initial value. So there we lost the luminous amount because it's, nothing's plugged in right now. So let's use distance into our initial value. Okay, now we're getting something back. And let's go adjust our gradient. Go to our gradient editor and adjust value. Um, I'm just going to drag these to the left. And I'm going to move in here a little bit to see if I'm getting anything. Okay, so again, unfortunately, there's a bug that um, makes you refresh the, uh, the preview, which you have to do by zooming in a little bit. Uh, there's a couple other ways to do it too, but that's the easiest way. So what we have here is is just over a very few percentage points. I've gone from, this is a distance value, right? So this is distance away from the curve. So if we go shortly, just a short distance away from the curve, we bring the luminosity down to zero. So we get this sort of middle stripe here. And I can stretch these out a little bit to give me a little bit softer stripe. Give me a softer stripe. Okay, so now we have this kind of cool luminous stripe down our uh, Boba Fett, uh, whatever, thermostat. Um, you'll also notice that preview is taking a longer time to compute the, uh, the render. And that's because um, distance away from the curve is, is a more time-consuming computation than percentage on the curve. 
Um, and that's just one of the deals with no shading. Let me just drag this back a little bit. Um, you know, if you're going to be doing something like this, you're going to be increasing the uh, computational work, you know, load on your on your scene, and you're going to get a little bit slower feedback than you like. Okay, so this is kind of where I want it. Kind of cool. Um, I have this little thing down the middle there. But what if we want to have it stop like halfway? So let's go back to our schematic. And let's, again, we can just, because we're using nodal shading, we can incorporate some math nodes into our shading network. Again, something that we couldn't really do um, with the shader tree. So if I go in here and add just a basic uh, math node, multiply, where are you? Basic math multiply. And I plug uh, the texture value into there, and then I plug the output into the value there. Um, you'll see it's going away because our multiply node is, is zero. So this value we did in our graph times zero equals zero, which equals equal zero for the constant, which equals zero for luminous amount. Whereas if we go back to one, then we get we get it back, right? Okay. So what I would like to do is grab another gradient. In fact, um, we can go up here and add recent. Let's do a, a shader nodes recent. The recents, by the way, are um, in, in the context of the submenu we're in, which is kind of cool. So let's do a recent gradient node. And here we can actually use the same, here's a quick trick. We've got a coordinate system right here, right? For this gradient node. Well, we don't need that. We'll just use the coordinate system that we already had for this gradient node. So here's our gradient coordinate system. Let's go out of this and into the texture locator. Now we can use the same, since we're using the same coordinates for this, we can use the same curve probe uh, to give us an initial value. So here let's just use percentage and initial value. And let's uh, update our gradient here. So we're in our gradient editor. We're just going to update value. And we can middle click down at the bottom here to give us some keyframes. So let's grab these two and say uh, value zero. Maybe grab that guy and value 100. So um, if you press A, it'll auto fit it. And so here, here's what we have in the uh, pat percentage along the path. And if we go to schematic and, and replace this one with this one, so we do texture value out. You can see we've got uh, a luminous amount going this way from zero and then gradually fading out around 50%. And now what we can do with this multiply node is we can take both of these values and compute them, uh, multiply them together to compute them, which is kind of cool. So now we've got our cool sort of middle stripe going down the middle and fading out. Okay. So again, this is something, what I like about the shader tree over here is if I don't like this, I can just uh, turn it off, <laughs> right? Very quickly without having to delve in here and unhook things. Or I can just knock it down, let's say, to 66% or something like that to get a little more of a subtle effect. Um, so again, this is a little bit of a slow computation with all these curve probes going on. Um, so let me just do a quick F9 to take a look at our Boba Fett. Okay, so here we have the final render of Boba Fett's thermostat. We've got the nice gradient here from ice cold Hoth all the way to burning hot Mufasa, Mustafa, something like that. That planet in the third one. It's either the planet in the third one or that's the name of the dad from the Lion King. And my, my Star Wars Kung Fu is getting bad. Ugh. Anyway, got a nice uh, gradient down the middle from the distance probe on the curve, and then using the percentage probe, we were able to fade it off here. So that's pretty cool. That's some uh, nodal shading kung fu for you for Moto 801.